What's up gamers, have you seen Evil Dead Rise yet? If not, it's a pretty good movie, you should come check out my review. But if not, the reason you're here today is actually for patch number 4 of Sons of the Forest. This is my third time covering one of these patches and there's a lot to unpack. Honestly, this could be one of the cooler updates overall, if nothing else with just the fixes. But we'll have to wait and see. So with that being said, my name is Falling Hertz, let's hop right into the update. So first off, let's talk about the new features that have been added. There's a new camera that you can find in the moor towards one of the end game parts of the levels. And with this item, you can find the first of the found footage tapes. So this is once again, another way to kind of convey the story of this game, which unfortunately it feels like it's pretty late in the game. Uh, at the time of recording, I'm not sure if you can record with this camera. It'd be, it'd be pretty cool if you could record something funny, but maybe not. There's also a new point of interest for discovery laptops. Not entirely sure what this means at the time of recording, hopefully I'll find some footage of that to have in the background of the video. If not, if it's something like spoilery, you know, later game stuff that people are going to want to see for themselves, I may skip it. They've also added the ability to name your saved games, which is really good and, you know, with the improvements made to the saved games last time around, I really think they're making a robust system that's going to be a lot easier for switching between players, devices, and honestly just different save games if that's what you're wanting to do. And another thing, this is more for just multiplayer people, is that they've added a kick and ban pop-up message when being, well of course, kicked or banned from the game. Now that's always the shortest segment, usually, and those are some of the coolest features to the game, but then we have the long, long, long list of improvements. Uh, Kelvin can now carry two logs at one time, so basically doubling his efficiency at any point. Uh, they improved the uh, night vision goggles from the last update, making them brighter so they're actually useful in the dark. And now in the alternate start version of the snow crash scene, there is now snow impact, so that's pretty cool. And they've improved a longer Timmy fighting the demon boss intro animation. And then when Virginia is in high sentiment with you, she's now visiting the player more often. They've also added more spots in villages for cannibals to stand watch or just sit around. So once again, you know, with the improvements made to these cannibal villages, they're definitely padding out and making them more, I don't want to say lifelike, but they're not just standing there or doing nothing for you to roll up and try to kill them. And speaking of the AI though, muddies are now more likely to flee when they're scared. So that's uh, once again pretty cool. I think any type of behavioral changes is always really cool in these updates. And cannibals will now sometimes look at each other when not fighting. I, uh, you know, once again, once when I'm recording some passive gameplay for this video, I'm going to have to see exactly what that means. Cannibals now have new animation variations for running and lunging attacks, making them more evasive in combat. And honestly, any type of changes in animations is going to really throw back the flow of combat, and I really like that. And then cannibals, when they're wearing their creepy or leaf armors, will now be visibly broken and knocked off when they're hit, which honestly sometimes it is, but maybe not all the time, so it's good to see that that has been improved. Female cannibals will sometimes drink blood from the village troughs or even from dead animals. They're also going to cheer for other family members and occasionally dance to the radio. So, you know, if you're really out there lonely on the island, maybe you find yourself a nice cannibal girl and have a life together. Male cannibals, on the other hand, will now sometimes bash dead bodies of enemies. So, you know, maybe look out for them. Skinned small animals will now have skinned visuals, specifically the rabbit, squirrel, eagle, duck, seagull, and land turtles. Which, once again, this is just an immersion thing, you know, like, we did it, so we might as well be able to see it. But speaking of animals, low health deer and moose will sometimes lay down and rest. Um, you know, obviously, if you beat the fuck out of them with a katana before they run away, that's just what they're going to do. And they, it seems they've added a wetness effect, like an official counter, n not something that may be shown on screen, per se, that when you're completely submerged, it increases, or, you know, when you're cleaning in the water, like, you know, washing off the blood or whatever, and when you're out, it reduces over time. So that's all right, I guess, as long as it doesn't turn into the whole, you're cold, you're cold, you're cold thing from the first game. Speaking of washing in the water, though, dead bodies now can also get washed of blood and dirt while thrown in the water, so that's pretty cool. But bouncing off of the blood talk, the deer now have bleeding damage, and they take increased damage when getting hit in the front body. Bird flight has been increased by a small percentage, which is great because I think birds are way too easy to run up on. Personally, I think you should have to deal with them from far away. Other improvements made include they've added a torn silver jacket to the end mutant. They've added some ducks to the golf course, which is always nice. You've got to be seeing them little duckies out there. They've also added a north arrow guide on the minimap, so I mean, I guess that's all right. 
For a multiplayer improvement, they have that the ballistic impact effects from other players will now be visible in multiplayer. Armor is now dropped if the player does not have available space for it, and if it's cycled off of being worn. Grenades and bombs will now play a water explosion effect when thrown in water, so that's a really cool thing. I didn't realize that wasn't even in the game, because I didn't try to waste it. And of course, dead cultist clothing is now bloody as well. And as we come up on the end of the list here, we've got more stuff. They've added more flower wreaths on some of the dead cultists around the map. They've added a new binder prop to security rooms. And they've improved some of the lighting in the residential bunker, so that's pretty cool. They've also improved the armor rack level of distance, meaning that from how far away you are, maybe the armor on it will show up better, or even the rack itself will zoom, like, actually, you know, kind of load in with the rest of your stuff and not take longer to load in. They've also added for the ability of binoculars, night vision goggles, and wire and light bulbs to be able to go into quick select slots. They've also said that the 3D printer readouts should update more accurately now, which before it was a little bit delayed, but, you know, wasn't that bad. And this one, I can't lie, I have no idea what exactly this means, but Fallen Log E has scaled down to 65% size. I have to assume this means that there's one version of a tree that when you chop it down, it, the, the log is just way too big for it, but I'm not entirely sure on that one. Okay, this is one thing that's really nice. They've uh, fixed some of the edges around the cliffs on the golf course, which if you're below, you can honestly walk right through the ground. It's really weird, but I'm hoping that's what they mean. And they've also added a new lake to the golf course to go along with those ducks from earlier. Kelvin can also now finish building shelves, so that's pretty cool. And they have set up a level of detail for logs in the storage holders. And the GPS map that you can hold in your hand all the time has been updated to include all current ponds and lakes. So you don't have to worry about anything on your map being outdated or anything like that. So that's really cool to see as well. And finally, for the last thing, they have removed location pins from opening cutscene laptop screen. So it is more like, a, you know, when you're going onto the island, you don't exactly know what to expect at any given point in time. And you have to kind of figure it out through the story and the gameplay. Overall, I really like the improvements added. It's like a shotgun blast of different things that I really don't know. I mean... You know, a lot of these things are small improvements, but that's what I've been saying the last two updates. It's like, these small improvements are really going to add up, and then the big features they're adding are going to be really nice. Now, as for the fixes, there's a lot of things here that I'm just not going to talk about. This list is exhaustive. It's a long list, and it's probably the biggest that we've seen yet. But to boil it down into a quick summary, they've fixed an achievement made some improvements to base building and the multiplayer experiences in general, and overall just squashed a ton of annoying little bugs that would honestly take you out of the experience if any of these things did happen to you. To me, the volume of these fixes is only good. There's a lot of things that, as I said, minor improvements that would take you out of gameplay or out of immersion are never good, and if you want to make a full-on, actually open-world survival with horror, you know, aesthetics, then you're going to need everything working at top gear at all times, and it seems like that's what they want this game to be. Now finally, for the audio section of this update, we have a few more fixes than usual. They fix some sounds in multiplayer having a very low precision location, meaning that it may sound like it's coming from the right when it may be a little to your left. Um, fix some other players hearing double impact sounds from shovel and repair tools. The cannibal armor now has impact audio when it's hit, and the pistol no longer doubles up on its reload audio. They also tuned the terrain and motor levels of the Night 5, assumingly meaning that while driving over certain terrain, it actually changes what you're sounding like, and motor levels just meaning it's maybe louder or quieter depending on whatever they did. They also fixed the fade time on gunshots in opening crash sequence, and added gunshots to the demon boss sequence. They've also added demon boss attack audio and her audio for the intro, and added new music stinger to the audio as well. And then finally, they've tuned waterfalls, large and small, and water spots, meaning that I think maybe that when you're going by, I think the audio might be a little louder based off of what I've seen, or maybe a little more quiet the closer you are. But that's all the changes we have in this update. However, we have two more things to discuss. We've got the hotfix, and we've got the promise of future content. First off, with the hotfix, they have fixed stuff for Virginia and Kelvin. Kelvin, for some reason, I guess had two GPS trackers. They've now changed that, of course. And Virginia's GPS trackers were not clearing when returned to the player. Now, assumingly, these two things have been fixed. But finally, going back to the original post for a second, they said that they've seen a lot of people asking, and they're finally going to be implementing the log sled, which was a big fan favorite from the first game, into patch number 5 when it does come. And I'll have that on screen here when that date should be, and you should look for a video from me within the next couple days after that. And as they, as they end it, they say the log sled is almost ready for release, and of course they confirm that it will be in the next patch. So that's really great to see. 
and they urge that you continue posting bug reports, feedbacks, and discussion in the community hub, which has been pretty much guiding these updates as they go. And I think now's a great time to hop into the game. I think I may be starting a new playthrough for update number five. But let me know what you think of the update down below and what you would like to see for Sons of the Forest going forward. My name is Falling Hertz, and yeah, consider subscribing, and that's about it.